hello guys welcome to the channel well in this particular video we are going to look at one of the graph traversal techniques which is breadth first search now this is really important technique guys and frequently asked by many companies like amazon microsoft flipkart etc so make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video now talking about the topics to be covered so we have graph traversal first then we have BFS and its applications. After this, we have BFS algorithm, followed by pseudocode complexity analysis, and finally, we have code implementation in C, Java, and Python. So, without any further delay, let me start with the first topic. So, we have graph traversal first, guys. And when we say traversal, then it essentially means that we are talking about traversing or visiting each node, right? Uh, you may have heard for uh, linked list traversal or array traversal, etc. In a similar manner, when we say graph traversal, then it basically means that we are talking about traversing each node or vertex of a graph. Now, these traversals are basically classified by the order we traverse each node. So, on the basis of the order we traverse each node, we have two main classifications. The first one is breadth first search. After this, we have depth first search. Now, I am going to explain both of these in brief. So, I have an example here and let me start with depth first search first. So, see guys. I have to traverse the whole graph, right? Let me start with the node 1. So I have the node 1 first. I am going to write the order here. So I have the node 1 first. After this, I will go to node 2. Then I will go to node 5. After this, I will go to node 6 and 7. So you can see that I am moving in a depth wise manner, right? So let me write the order as well. So I have 2, 5, 6, 7. Now there is no any node to traverse further, right? So I'll simply move back. I'll go to this 6, then I'll go to this 5. After this, I'll go to 2. Then I will go to this 4 and this 4 is not visited yet. So I'll simply write, write 4 here. After this, at last, I'll go to node 3. So I have 3 here. Now this is the order that we get when we traverse the graph using the DFS technique. What about BFS? So now let me explain BFS. But first of all, I'm going to remove extra stuff that I have written here, right? So let me remove everything from this. Okay, so see guys, in BFS, instead of moving in a depth wise manner, what we do is we move in a breadth wise manner. Let's see how. We start with a node, then we traverse every neighbor of that node, right? So let me write the order here. I have one. After this, I'll traverse every node of this one, right? So I have two and three here. Then you can see that this two again have two neighbors. So I'll traverse 5 and after this I'll traverse 4, right? And similarly, I'll traverse 6 and 7. So this is the order that we get when we traverse the graph using the BFS technique. In this particular video, we are going to look at BFS technique in detail. So let me start with what exactly is BFS. I have written the definition here. It says that it is one of the graph traversal techniques which visits every graph node in a level wise or breadth wise manner. Now we can start traversing from any random node, then we can visit all the neighbors of that node and so on. So I think now it's easier to understand using the previous explanation. See guys, uh, let me name the level first. So I have level 1, then level 2, then level 3, then 4 and then 5. So we start with the node 1 and then we move in a level wise manner so first we traverse this level after this we traverse this level then we have this level which is level 3 right then we have fourth level and then we at last we have fifth level so this is how we perform bfs now whenever we are at any node then we traverse every neighbor of that particular node right this is how we perform bfs now let's have a look at the applications of bfs so see guys there are multiple problems which are solved using the bfs technique right and i have mentioned few of them the first one is shortest path after this we have topological sorting then we have strongly connected components after this minimum spanning tree and at last we have gps navigation systems now guys looking at the applications makes me more curious about uh, learning the bfs algorithm so now let's start with bfs algorithm Okay, so I have written one example here and I have written the definition of BFS as well. And guys, we are going to use the definition of BFS in order to figure out how actually BFS algorithm works. See guys, it says that we can start traversing from any random node, right? So let's say for this example, we start traversing from the node 0. After this, we have to visit all the neighbors of that node, right? But before we start, 
we need a list in order to keep track of order of elements that we get right like we are starting from node 0 and after this we will visit some elements so we need to keep track of the order of elements and let's say this is answer list because answer of BFS is nothing but the order of elements that we get right okay now now let's start with node 0 so see guys first I'll store node 0 in the answer after this I have to process all the neighbors of node 0 so what are the neighbors I have 1 then 2 and then 6 right these are the neighbors that we have now you can see that there are three neighbors and we have to process each neighbor one by one right so I'll simply store these neighbors somewhere in a list right because we need to store them in a list so that we can process them one by one so let's say I have stored them in a list and this list is basically a neighbor list so let me call it n list right okay now I will start processing each neighbor one by one I'll start with this neighbor one so I'll simply pop it out after this I'll store it in the answer then I will store the neighbor of this particular node in the neighbor list right so I have stored it in the neighbor list now guys there is one important observation to make observation says that before we process this particular node we have to process all these nodes right let me explain why in BFS what we do is whenever we start from a node then we first process every neighbor of that particular node right and only after this we will uh, process other neighbors right the, like we have four here so we have to process one two and six first and only after this we are going to process four this means that before we process four we have to pop these elements right and can I say that the first element which was inserted in is going to be first out this means that this is falling first in first out order right and this order is basically implemented by a queue data structure so let me write queue here so I can say that instead of n list it is better to call it a queue data structure and this is very important guys always remember that in BFS algorithm we always use queue data structure right now I hope you have understood the intuition behind using queue data structure okay so let's come back to the algorithm again now we are going to pop out 2 right so I'll simply pop out 2 and I'll simply store it in the answer then I will add the neighbor of 2 so what are the neighbor of 2 I have 3 5 and 7 so I'll simply add 3 then 5 and then 7 to the uh, neighbor list right after this I will pop out 6 right and see guys uh, 6 has a neighbor 7 right and as 7 is a neighbor before this uh, let me store 6 in the answer list after this 6 has a neighbor 7 right so should we store 7 in the list again because we have already stored 7 right this means that we can't store the uh, same node again in the list because we have to process every node only once so we need to keep track of the visited node so I'll simply write that we keep track of a uh, keep track of visited node right and this is really important so that we don't get a uh, same node two times in our answer right so we have to keep track of visited node this is the second observation and now coming back to the algorithm again so what I'll do is I'll simply uh, add 6 to the answer and now there is no any neighbor right so I'm done with 6 again after this I'll add 4 to the answer by popping it out so 4 doesn't have any neighbor again so I'll simply add 4 to the answer and I'm done with 4 similarly I'll uh, store 3 then 5 and then 7 to the answer and this is how I can perform BFS this is the answer and order of elements that we have right and now guys there is one important thing see as soon as our queue becomes empty our task is done we are done with uh, performing BFS right so this is the third observation that we have uh, when queue is empty when queue uh, is empty empty task is done right task is done so this is how we can perform BFS now these three observations are really important observation which are going to help us a lot while implementing BFS algorithm right so now let me write the steps for BFS algorithm and I think we can simply figure it out the first step is to remove or get the first element from the queue so get uh, first uh, okay let me write first here first element from queue right this is the first step the second step is store that element in the answer list so store in answer list right and what about the third step the third step is simple store the neighbor of that element in the neighbor list right so store neighbors this is how we can perform BFS just uh, the game of three simple steps right now I hope you have understood the BFS algorithm right and so let me talk about the pseudocode of BFS so I have written the pseudocode guys and now I think it will be easier for you to understand let me start with the first line so first line says that I'm declaring an answer array in order to keep track of order of elements that we get right so 
answer array is basically going to store the order of elements. After this, we are making a queue and a visited array. Well, this is something that comes from the observations that we have made. See guys, the first observation says that we have to use a queue data structure in order to store the nodes that we are going to process, right? These are basically the neighbor nodes that we are storing. After this, the third observation says that when our queue is empty, our task is done. This means that while our queue is not empty, we have to perform the task again and again, right? See guys, while our queue is not empty, we have to perform the task again and again. But before this, we are storing the first node in the queue. You can see that first I am storing, then I am visiting that node as well, right? So we have to start from the node 0, that's why I am storing the node 0, right? After this, when we process node 0, then we have to uh, add it to the answer, right? So see guys, these are the three main steps that we need to perform again and again while our queue is not empty. What are the steps? Steps are get the first element, then store in the answer list. After this, store neighbors, right? So see, the first step is basically to get the element from the queue, right? So I'll simply pop out the element. After this, the second step says that we have to store that particular uh, node in the answer. And after this, we have to process each neighbor of that particular node, right? See guys, I'll start with zero. And let's say this is the answer list and we have the queue as well. Queue is initially storing zero, right? And we will simply pop out zero. Then I'll add zero to the answer. And after this, we are going to add neighbors of zero. So I'll add one, two and six here. After this, I'll come to this one in the second iteration. I'll simply add it to the answer and then I will add the neighbor of this as well. So neighbor is four now. Okay, now I'll come to node two. So I'll simply pop it out. Then I'll add to the answer. And after this, I'll add the neighbors as well. So three, five and seven are the neighbors, right? After this, I'll come to node six. I'll simply pop out node six and then I will add the neighbors, right? But the neighbor is already visited. This seven is already visited. We always keep track of visited element as well, right? This is the point where we visit the element. Okay, so we are not going to store it. Else we are, uh, so we are, we are done with this element six, right? Now we will start with this element four. So see guys, add four to the answer, remove from the list. And after this, uh, there is no any neighbor. So I'm done with four as well. Similarly, there is no any neighbor for any element. So I'll simply pop the element and then add to the answer. So I have five, then I have seven. This is how I can perform BFS for this particular graph, right, guys? And I have written the code here. Now I think the idea is clear to you. Before I show you the implementation, let me talk about the time complexity. See, guys, I am traversing each node, right? And while checking for neighbors, then I am checking for each edge as well. So you can see that there are three edges for node two, right? This means that there are three neighbors. So the total complexity depends on V and E. So the total complexity will be of V plus E, right? This is about the time complexity. What about the space complexity? So the space complexity of BFS is basically O of V because we are using some extra space here, right? In order to keep track of visited and in order to keep track of nodes that are needs to be processed, right? So this is how we can uh, perform BFS, guys. Now I think the algorithm is clear to you. Pseudo code is clear to you. Let me show you the implementation now. So here is the code. On the left hand side, I have written the C++ code and on the right hand side, I have written the Java code and after this, I have written the Python code as well. You can see guys, the approach is quite similar to the one I have explained you. The only difference is of syntax, right? So this is all about this video. I hope you guys will like the explanation and if you like the explanation, then you can hit the like button. Thank you.